In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us worship God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. A warm welcome to this service of morning worship on this special day when we celebrate the festival of Pentecost. Our first hymn invites us to be still in the presence of God, the Holy One who is near us, whose glory surrounds us, whose power sustains us and heals us. Be still, for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One, is near. Jesus Christ, whom we worship, is our crucified, risen and ascended Lord, and we have walked with him through this journey of love. We have faced the agony of his suffering and death on the cross. We have rejoiced at his bursting free from the bonds of death. We have enjoyed his risen presence with us. We have seen his return to the throne before which every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that this Jesus is Lord. And now with the followers of his time, we await the coming of the promised Holy Spirit, his gift to his people, through whom we make Christ known to the world. At this time of difficulty and isolation, anxiety and sorrow. Let us be reassured of the presence of the Holy Spirit with us as we come to the God who loves us. So we pray. As we wait in silence, as we listen to your word, 
as we worship you in majesty, as we long for your refreshing. Fill us with your spirit. As we long for your renewing, as we long for your equipping, as we long for your empowering, fill us with your spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In a few moments of silence, we bring to God those things which we've done wrong and ask him to forgive us. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes, as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, that you may walk in the new life of the Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We now pray the collect, today's special prayer for Pentecost. Holy Spirit, sent by the Father, ignite in us your holy fire. Strengthen your children with the gift of faith. Revive your church with the breath of love and renew the face of the earth through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our next hymn asks God, the Holy Spirit, to renew our hearts. Give us faith and passion to abide in us, enabling us to be Christ-like in all that we do. Holy Spirit, living breath of God, breathe new life into my willing soul.
Lucy Sturdy, a young member of our church family, will now read for us the Pentecost Bible reading for today from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. And then, following the reading, our vicar, Rob Crofton, will share a reflection with us. Shalom, shalom, peace be with you. Shalom, shalom, my child. Shalom, shalom, peace be with you. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Today's reading is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 13, the coming of the Holy Spirit. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave mobility. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. This is the word of the Lord. Shalom, shalom, peace be with you. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Know the Prince of Peace is always by your side. Let's pray for a moment. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. Please open our hearts and minds now to hear you speaking to us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, today is Pentecost, and it's a wonderful festival of the church. And in a way, it's the conclusion of that great series of festivals that we celebrate from Christmas, then Good Friday and Easter, and Ascension Day and Pentecost. And all of them together are telling the story of Jesus and helping us to relive those different parts of his life and the good news about him. And when we get to Pentecost, it's the final part because Jesus has just ascended, gone back up into heaven to God, his Father, and he's told his followers to wait, to wait in Jerusalem for the promise of the Father, for the gift that the Heavenly Father would send. And so there they were, 120 of them, waiting and praying in Jerusalem for 10 days. And then the day of Pentecost came. Pentecost means 50 days. And it was a Jewish festival, a harvest festival, celebrating the first fruits of the harvest. And they gathered together to celebrate it. But what they didn't know was that that would be the day when the promise was fulfilled and the gift of the Holy Spirit would be poured out. 
And what an amazing thing it was when the Holy Spirit came. Did you hear in that reading, read so well for us by Lucy, did you hear the sound that the Spirit made in the house where they were? There was the sound of a a rushing, violent wind. And then there was the fire. Flames of fire came among them, divided and separated out, so that a tongue of fire came onto the head of each one of them. And we're told each of them was filled with the Holy Spirit. And that was just what Jesus had promised, that they would be filled with power when the Holy Spirit came on them. And what was the result? Well, immediately, each one of them started speaking. And yet, it wasn't ordinary words, words that they knew in their own languages. They were speaking other languages. And it turned out that they were speaking God's praise in the languages of all kinds of people from all sorts of countries who were there in Jerusalem for the festival. And this commotion drew people's attention. They could hear such a noise. People came from all around the city to find out what was going on. And as they came, they picked out their own mother tongue, the languages that they could recognise. Latin, Greek, Arabic, all kinds of languages. And they heard God's wonders being told. And they were absolutely amazed and astonished. But they were also puzzled. They scratched their heads. They were bewildered. What on earth does this mean, they said. And the answer was, which Peter gave to them as he stood up and preached the first Christian sermon. The answer was, that this was God pouring out his long-promised Holy Spirit upon those followers of Jesus, and he was making them into his church, the Christian community, the community that speaks of God and speaks of Jesus so that others may hear and come to know him too. And friends, on this Pentecost Sunday, when we are still unable to gather together in one place, as those disciples did, when we're still locked out of our church building, when we're still isolated from one another, not able to meet, on this Pentecost Sunday, this Bible reading reminds us of who we truly are as the church. We are God's community, breathed into life by the Holy Spirit and called and empowered to bear witness to him and to all that he's done in Jesus. And friends, that is still true for us. Even though we can't meet together, God's Spirit is the one who unites us and enables us to speak of him to others. And that's the challenge for us in these days, is to ask God to guide us and lead us and shape us afresh by his Holy Spirit so that we may reach out to others with his love, so that we may speak of him in these difficult times. And I want to finish with a promise of Jesus, because you might be thinking, Well, it was all right for them. They experienced the wind and the fire and the flame, but that was the first disciples. What about me? I've never experienced God's power like that. Well, Jesus gives us a wonderful promise in the gospel. He speaks of God as our Father who loves to give us good gifts. And he says, How much more will your Father in heaven Give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. So friends, 
all we need to do for each one of us is to reach out to God, to turn to him and to pray to him, to ask him to fill us with that same powerful Holy Spirit. And he promises that he will do. It may not be all fireworks like it was on that first Pentecost Sunday, but we can be confident that God will answer our prayer and that the Holy Spirit will do the same work in us of bringing us to know God and his love in Jesus and will give us the words to speak of that love to others. So would you join me in a prayer now? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the promise of your Holy Spirit. And we ask you, please, to fill us, fill each one of us with your Holy Spirit, that we may know you, that we may know your love for us in Jesus, and that we may speak of you to all those around us. And we ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us now affirm our faith with the words of the Creed. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. Now we pray that the Holy Spirit will fall afresh on us, will mould us, fill our lives and control us. These thoughts are shared with us in the words of the hymn. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit.
We are so lucky to be living in an age where we can be filled with your Holy Spirit. Thank you for being with us every second of the day. Help us to know we are always under your protection and have nothing to fear. That with you everything is possible. And that you love every single one of us, even when we make mistakes. We do not always understand why things happen, but we put our trust in you. Please help us to listen to you, understand what we need to do, and give us the strength to do it. We pray for leaders around the world to make good choices and to work together to find a way through the challenges we face. We pray that those who are grieving feel your presence. We pray that those who may not know you will have their hearts opened and feel the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for your love, generosity and forgiveness. Amen. Dear God, thank you for keeping us safe and helping us make wise choices. Sorry that we have invented things that ruin your earth. Please help us to fix it. Please save those who have caught COVID-19 and help the virus go away. Amen. Dear God, please help us now while COVID-19 is around. Please help everyone who is worried or scared. Please look after the elderly people who might get poorly if they catch it. Thank you that children don't get very poorly. Thank you for all the doctors and nurses who are suffering to look after us. Amen. Dear God, we pray for all the churches, vicars, doctors, nurses, carers, postmen, delivery drivers, bin men, food shop assistants and other key workers. Thank you that I am safe at home with my family with lots of things to do. Please look after the children who might not have many things to do and might be sad. Please help the teachers get ready for children going back to school. Please help all who are suffering and make them okay in the end. Thank you that we can still enjoy your beautiful world when we walk in the park and see the little egret ducklings and the insects. Amen. We now say together the prayer that Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Our final hymn at this challenging time for us all speaks to us of the God in whom we find rest and gladness, renewed life and light in the darkness. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come unto me and rest.
And so we pray. Faithful God, who fulfilled the promises of Easter by sending us your Holy Spirit and opening to every race and nation the way of life eternal. Open our lips by your Spirit that every tongue may tell of your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Spirit of Truth lead you into all truth, give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and strengthen you to proclaim the word and works of God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit remain with you now and always. Amen. Filled with the Spirit's power, continue on life's journey in the light and peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.